Greetings and welcome back to another episode of How to Digital History. My name is Michael Delise and in today's episode we're looking at how to organize files and folders within Google Drive. Before we get started I just want to say that Google Drive is definitely the most accessible and perhaps the easiest to use of all of these file sharing and file storing applications that are currently available. I do like Dropbox and I like a number of other ones that I've used. Google Drive just seems to work really well and I highly recommend it. Now one of the things that Google Drive does not do very well is provide a means by which to organize the documents. Now what we're looking at right now on this screen is what my Google Drive looks like and so as you can see the the file names are this is in list view you might you might have noticed that there is a grid view as well um, my list view this is how I prefer to look at it the list view allows me to look at all the files that I have stored and all the folders and it organizes them uh, primarily by way of the name field. Um, you may also organize it by last modified and so you can say that you want to see this by the last modified. In this case this France exchange I just changed the 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 name on this and so because I did that it now places it at the very top of the list when I click on last modified. So it gives you the the most recently changed item that you've worked on. You can also select the last opened. So not necessarily something you've changed, but you could also look at something that you last opened up. So if I click on last opened, my prospectus is what comes up. Nevertheless, none of these items really help us to organize the folder. They help us to sort in the same way that the search function up here allows us to search but that does that does not equate organize and what I mean by organization is this so this is my prospectus and dissertation folder here is where I am currently authoring my dissertation now as you will notice there is something extra included before each of the titles for each of the items so my prospectus folder which is the very first one at the top that folder includes a code a.1 dash dash prospectus that 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 little prefix there a.1 is there and we can look at it on the rename function is there to keep the prospectus folder at the very top whenever I open this folder so there is, I've changed the name, I've removed the code from it, so you can see that now suddenly the prospectus folder is in the middle of the pack. It's, it's be, be, below my conclusion and before the grant applications. And that's not where I want it. I want it at the very, very top. The problem is that we can't just move them. If I try to move this up here, it, it will not allow me. If I try dropping it here, it thinks that I'm trying to put it to place it inside of the introduction folder, right? And and I do not want to do that. Uh, I can't move it to the very bottom. It will not let me do that. And so the only way that I can manage the the ordering of the files and the folders in a way that is consistent is for me to create a naming convention, file naming convention. Now this is if you've worked in a large institution. If you've worked with with um, uh, servers or anything, you're very familiar with this. Um, if you have not, chances are that this might be the first time that you hear of a file naming convention. However, they used to be very popular way back in the day when computers um, only allowed when Windows computers only allowed an eight character file name, and so you were restricted to naming all of your files with just eight letters or numbers or a combination of those but you were only restricted to eight of them so you always have to come up with a code of some sort to tell you what that file was about and so in this case I'm using this same sort of coding scheme from way back in the day to basically say that I want this folder at the very top and so I'm doing a 
dot one dash dash just to create some spacing um, and there it is now it's at the very top of my project. now I can still sort this I can still tell it to give me the last modified or I can still tell it to to order this in descending alphabetical order or ascending alphabetical order but ascending alphabetical order is the primary uh, sorting method of Google Drive and therefore this makes it easy for us to use the name of the file or the folder as the primary organizational tool. We do have to keep in mind however how this works. So for example you will notice that I didn't just write a perspective it's a dot one perspective and the reason for that is because the letter a as well as the b c d and you know all the way down through z there's that gives us 26 different categories that we can use and and i know that this is you know basic uh concepts here but the alphabet has 26 letters so by using a through z we then have 26 different categories by adding the dot we then essentially we can we can begin uh, uh, we can subcategorize and we can then say okay in the category of A I am now going to use numbers right so for example A.1 is my perspective but I can easily add something in there and make it A.2 so for example in the case of the perspectives the perspectives is not going to be formally a part of the dissertation the perspectives in the pre-dissertation aspect but I do want something here in between in fact what I want to do is I'm going to use the code B.1 and I'm going to write front matter now front matter is um, your acknowledgments, your preface, your table of contents, um, it's everything that is not formally part of the content of your book. Um, and so, and so th in this case, the front matter is a part of, of the dissertation, but it is not a part of, of the prospectus. And so uh, I'm using B.1 because I had B.2 for introduction, so this allows me to place it first, right? So no matter what I do, Here's my perspectives, here's the front matter, here's the introduction, here's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. You notice that each of the chapters begin with the letter C. C.1, C.2, C.3, C.4, C.5. And, and then the conclusion as C.6. Um, that allows me to maintain the chapters sort of clumped together into one category and I'm including the conclusion there which I'm not including in the introduction there's a reason for that it has to do with the fact that much of the introduction is perhaps going to be borrowed from the prospectus itself uh, and so I decided to keep that separate um, and you'll notice that below that I have I'm using the letter X uh, X.1 X.2 and X.3 to organize these uh, these these external items that are not going to be ultimately part of the dissertation but they are part of the effort that goes towards the dissertation and so here is this convention that I've put together this file naming convention that I have created but there is a problem with this because I've made this convention for my project and I do not expect to have more than nine or ten different categories within the primary categories and what I mean by that is that for every letter of the alphabet in this fashion that I have created I can allow myself essentially ten different categories or subcategories within each of the main categories so if I say that that this is a dot one, I can have a dot two, a dot three, a dot four, a dot five, all the way through a dot nine, and I can also do a dot zero, uh, because I'm not using a dot zero here. Then that means that it's not 
that's not really an issue because if I were to do an 8.0 it would place it before the 1 and I'm not going to have any categories that go over um, 9 or 10 and so this is this is a necessary for my project however let's say that your project does include however a chapter 10 and you were using this same naming file convention let's see let's start a new folder we're going to do chapter 10 just simply chapter 10 and as you can see chapter 10 it's not coded uh, so Google Drive is just putting it down as it is so let me add our file naming convention code which would be c.10 dash dash space now when I hit enter look what's going to happen instead of chapter 10 being listed under chapter 5 or for that matter under chapter or under the conclusion because it's, it's c.10 Google Drive reads that as position C, position 1, position 0. Meaning that it thinks that it is in the 0 position and that there might be a C.11. And so it's going sequentially through the positions of the file name in order to order it. So in order to fix this, if this was something that I was really... Um, that I really needed what I would need to do is ahead of time instead of creating the naming the this letter dot number convention I should have done letter dot zero number and if I were had done that throughout you will see that As I change each one, they move. But now, as you can guess, we're going to have a problem here. Because I decided to use C.6 for my conclusion. If I put C.6, um, excuse me, C.06 in front of the word conclusion, now my chapter 10 is after my conclusion. And it shouldn't be. It should be, in this case, after chapter 5, normally after chapter 9. But again, I've run into this problem here. And so the solution is, 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 is simple in this case. I'm just going to rename my conclusion to D01. And for that matter, I'm going to add another folder here, D.02, and call it back matter. And so in this back matter, I will add things such as the index to, to my dissertation as well as the bibliography of my dissertation and so now as you can see the naming convention makes more sense C.01 and of course this allows me to have uh, 100 different uh, chapters by using this now that's not going to happen uh, I think my advisor would kill me uh, if I don't commit suicide doing that um, but essentially this is how we can organize a Google Drive folder in a way that maintains the structure of the drive. I'm going to delete this at the moment, remove, there we go. And I can then, now let, let's say that I want to, you know, because this is something that I am sharing with somebody else, I can say, well, I want to highlight uh, something here. So let me just, I can do it by adding a star or I can do it by changing the color of this right and so this lets whoever I'm sharing with know that oh maybe maybe this is a priority maybe this is this is something special something different Th those tools are available to you but in terms of organizing and structuring a research project file naming convention is the way to go 
It's also common if you're using naming conventions in something that you are sharing. It is also common to include a naming convention readme file. So I would, if I wanted to do this, I would say new file, Google Docs, and hit OK. And this file will open up in Google Documents. And so I can easily just write here um, readme. Just say readme. And I can create a small index. I can create a table. Insert table and say, okay. Let's do that. And there you go. Now, if I create a different um, category of material, if I if I want to include notes, if I want to include communications, maybe emails that I need to save or anything like that, and I can add it here to this to this list. And and again, this isn't necessary unless you are primarily uh, sharing this information. If you're sharing your 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 project, this is really something that you should do so that other people know what what you're doing, why things are named a certain way, and and how they should approach it. So that's saved. And so as you can see now, it appears down here. Read me naming convention. And we are done. This project is fully organized and it remains in this fashion forever. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day.